Welcome back to Beacon the Storm. I'm your host, Dr. Bradford Carlton. And today we are talking about coming out of your shell. Like little turtles, you need to be able to expose yourself to the world to be able to accomplish anything, really. And so many men out there are afraid, they're worried, they're stressed out about coming out and telling people who they are and what they're about and, and just kind of being a member of society. Like, um, I can say that because uh, for many years, I was the gamerpreneur online here, and I um, my content was directed to video gamers in order to teach them how to build a business and do marketing. And so many of these people wanted to have their stream that they can do from their house, and they didn't want to like so many people don't want to talk and they don't want to engage with their audience. They don't like and they don't want to share. And and part of it kind of leads back to the fact that if you act that way. It's no surprise that you may not have other people in your life. You may not have a lot of friends. You may not have a loved one or a significant other. And I see so many men out there who like, how can I get a girl, Brad? You see this on Reddit at least three times a day. Um, how, like, I'm 22 years old. I've never been with a woman. How can I like blah, blah, blah. Okay. And the answer is always the same. You got to man up and be more confident and go out there. Because at the end of the day, confidence is key. Confidence is sexy. If you can be confident in yourself, then guess what? You can accomplish pretty much anything. And that includes going out and finding a significant other. Now, how do you be confident? Like I've, I've talked about this numerous times. And because this is one of those topics that people keep talking about, keep asking, I'm probably going to come back to it over and over again, because confidence is key. Confidence is the thing that you need to have in order to be able to get out of your shell and go out there and do whatever it is you want to do in your life. All right. It doesn't matter what you want to do. It does not matter what you want to do. If you can be confident, you can go and do it. All right. And don't listen to people who go, oh, well, you, you know, fake it till you make it like fake it till you make it's how you start. OK, fake it, but don't necessarily keep faking it. At some point, you have to actually start feeling it, because if you don't start genuinely believing that you're capable of doing the things that you want to do, you're not going to do them. And that's kind of how it works psychologically. That's how it works. And I mean, even biblically, uh, Jesus says, when you pray, believe that you've already received the thing and you will surely receive it. Like, that's kind of how this works. You have to believe in yourself, believe in the thing, and it will come. So confidence is key. So how do you be confident? You practice. You practice the thing over and over again. That's that's end of the day. That's what it is. If you want to get better at a video game, you practice the level, right? If you want to get better at art, you practice the art. If you want to get better at whatever class you're taking in school, you study. That's also called practice, right? If you want to be a better doctor or attorney, it's called the practice of medicine and the practice of law. You got to keep practicing, okay? And that's what malpractice insurance is for. If you want a significant other or a loved one and you've never had one before and you don't know where to begin or where to start, you have to practice. Practice talking to people. Practice saying stuff. Go out into public. Go to events, community events, and just start talking to people. It doesn't even have to be like if you're a guy out there and you're looking to get a woman, you don't have to start by talking to women. Start by talking to guys. Just practice talking to people. And as you get more confidence in talking to people, then, you know, talk to little old ladies because, you know, there's no risk in talking to little old ladies, right? That's not necessarily true. I had little, uh, when I was 26 years old, man, those little old ladies would hit on me so hard and some asked me out and I'm like, no, thank you. Like that kind of scared me a little bit, but that's beside the point. <sighs> okay, so practice talking to little old ladies. And you know what? Little old ladies like to flirt and you can flirt with little old ladies almost without consequence um, and you'll get better at it. And then you, you know, drop it down to like 50 year old ladies and 40 year old ladies and 30 year old ladies and 20 year old ladies. And before you know it, you'll be able to talk to people your own age, whatever age that range is, right? That's that's what it is. That's, that's how simple it is. You just go out there and talk to people and eventually you're going to learn. And then when it comes time to like, how do I make a move, Brad? Man, I don't have good advice for you on that one because it's just, you kind of have to... The, the, the advice my friend gave me years ago was just kind of keep pushing the line a little bit and she'll let you know if you push too far, okay? And I'm not saying 
man, I'm not saying just start reaching into people's pants. Do not do that out the gate. Start by, you know, kissing, okay? If, if you're starting to date somebody, you start by kissing them. And then you start kissing their neck. And then you kiss their shoulder and you, you work your way down. And if they're like, no, no, up here. Like, okay, then you keep kissing up there. And then you just every now and then push the line a little bit and see if what you're allowed to do. If you're told no, listen to the word no. No means no, all right? No means no every single time. It doesn't matter if they, mean, they, they actually mean try harder. No means no. You never, ever risk that one. Okay, so confidence is the key. Now, where does confidence come from? Because it's one thing to say, go out there and practice. But all of the science says that if you just go out there and practice, and you have a mindset of, I'm failing, I'm failing, I'm a loser, this isn't working over and over again, okay? If your psychology is not right, all the practice in the world isn't going to help you. Where does the confidence really come from? The confidence really comes from a belief in yourself and belief in yourself comes from true and meaningful belief in God. A belief that there's a power with you, a power and ability that you cannot describe, that you can't necessarily understand, that will allow you to grow, okay? The, the force of life itself, which is God, is behind you. You have the ability to be better. You have the ability to be a better person, to be more, more intelligent, be more creative, to be stronger, to be more confident. And you have to understand that that power can grow just like any plant. All right, it's, it's like a seed. It may not be a physical seed, like an apple seed. Like if you hold an apple seed in your fingers for long enough, and it creates a nice, warm, moist environment for that apple seed, that apple seed will kind of crack open and a little sprout will come out. I've had it happen. I've held an apple seed in my fingers and a little sprout popped out. Like, oh, cool, that's, that's awesome. The ability to develop confidence in yourself is like a seed. You may have never nurtured it before. You've never tended to that seed before. But if you, if you put energy into that seed, mental energy into that seed, it'll take root in your head. And the, the neurons will start to grow in the way they need to grow, kind of like a sprout. And they'll intertwine and they create the connections that develops what you need to develop. And that's kind of the root system. And the root system then starts to make the sprouts and the twigs and whatnot. And that's the physical actions that you take. So many people just want confidence. They just want to be able to go out there and have a pill that makes them all good and they can start talking to women and just, just like that. And that's not how it works. They're trying to have the fruit on the tree before they've even developed a root system. You have to spend some time really wanting to be a better person, really wanting to have that confidence in yourself to be able to go accomplish whatever it is you want to do. And then once you have that in place, you got to let go of all the rest. You got to let go of all the worries. You got to let go of the doubts. You got to let go of the fears. You got to let go of everything that's been holding you back because it's not doing you any good. All right. It's like trying to drive your car with the emergency brake on. Your car will go. I will tell you, I have accidentally driven some cars before with the e-brake on. Um, years ago, a friend of me, mine asked me to like move his car every couple days and first couple days I'm moving his car I'm like this thing is so sluggish why is it not going you really got to press on the gas for this thing to move and at, by day two or three of moving his car I'm like oh shoot there's like an e-brake under here oops right so um if you are in your life and you are trying to figure out why things aren't going for you it's because you have the e-brake on. Those, that e-brake is your own thoughts, your own processes that are inside of you saying, I can't, I'm not able to, I'm not good enough. All these, these negative things you say about yourself that you may not necessarily say out loud. You may say them out loud. Uh, Bruce Lee, I think it was, said um, something along, I'm gonna paraphrase, said something along the lines of, never say anything negative about yourself, even in jest. Because that's what you really, that, that will always, the chickens will always come home to roost. All right? You can't ever say anything bad about yourself. And that may sound like you're being narcissistic. Not necessarily. That's just being confident. All right? You got to let go of all of the hangups, all the baggage, all the things your parents and your brothers and sisters and grandparents and whatever, whoever said about you when you were growing up. None of it's true. You can be whatever you want to be. I used to tell myself, I don't have an artistic bone in my body. I remember when I was like nine years old, and I'm drawing something, and I put a lot of effort. I was like drawing a comic, nine years old. Multiple pages, that whole storyline. And I showed my parents, and they're like, oh, you know, you could draw it better next time. 
and like it crushed me. And I told myself, oh, I'm, I'm just not, not artistic, I guess. And for decades, I'm like, I'm not artistic. And people would say, you know, in class, when I was in high school and in, in college, you have some group project, you gotta draw something. Hey, Brad, can you do that? Oh, I, I don't have an artistic bone in my body, I would say. And for years and years and years, that continued. And then uh, my law practice, I had to make a flyer in order to be able to advertise our firm. And like, it was ugly. And I just chalked it up. Oh, I don't have an artistic bone in my body. Like, it is what it is. You asked me to do it. And then eventually I started learning Photoshop. And I started learning how to make things happen. And after a while, people are, would see my stuff and they're like, Brad, this is really good. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't have an artistic bone in my body. Like, no, 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 Brad, this is good. And it took me a long time to go, you know what? This actually is pretty good compared to some other art that I've seen out there. I, I actually do a pretty decent job. And so now I have stuff for sale. I have my own art for sale on my website, beliefauthority.com, shameless plug. It's not shameless, like it helps promote this whole thing, right? Helps promote the glory and word of God. And now I, my art is out there, it's in the world and people are able to go get my art and people have purchased my art. And I have to sit here and tell myself over and over again, because even now I have that voice in the back of my head go, well, you know, Brad, and I have to let it go because it's not true. I do have an artistic bone in my body. I'm not sure which one it is, but I've gotten better and I got better through practice. And I've developed my confidence through practice, which is what I've been saying from the beginning of this. Too many people just want to hustle through this and hurry through this and just listen to some YouTuber who tells them something that makes them feel good right then in the moment. And then they go off and they try it and then the motivation just disappears because uh, motivation without faith is meaningless. You have to have the faith and the faith comes from an understanding that there is a power that directs and guides the universe and that includes you. And if you can understand how to tap into that power and how it is able to change you, you can use the power to your benefit and go off and make things happen in your life. All right? So I, too many people get hung up on labels of Christian and religious and all of that. Strip it all away, and what are we really talking about? We're talking about some power that directs and guides the universe. All right? The, the four fundamental forces of the universe. You got gravity, the weak nuclear force, the strong nuclear force, and the electromagnetic force. All right? They all operate in different levels. They all operate different ways. But in essence, they are all the same. They pull things together. Gravity, electromagnetism, the weak force, the strong force, they all pull things together. Okay, we have no real idea how any of it works. We have math that kind of explains how it works, but we don't actually know what these forces are, or where they come from, and like what's happening. You know, um, the, uh, it was ins Insane Clown Posse years ago had a song, and in the song they go, magnets, how do they work? Like, right? I think the song was called Questions, maybe? Um, and I remember sitting down with a friend, a super liberal guy. He was the executive director of the County Democratic Party I lived at for a while. And he was making fun of that song because, oh, we know how magnets work. You know, the iron um, atoms line up in a certain way and it creates a, a field and that's how magnets work. But that's the, the description of the action. Like what's, what's causing that in the first place they don't have they don't know that part science does not know that part we do not know exactly how gravity operates we understand that when mass is near mass it attracts each other but why well, you know, it's just gravity right same with the weak force same with the strong force and so at the end of the day what is causing that i believe it's a, a power some power that wanted these forces in place in order to be able to make things work and operate a certain way. And because of that, you work and operate a certain way according to certain laws that we would never be able to math out properly to be able to figure out how you operate. And you have the ability to change by asking for something different. Okay, you are not an animal. You're not a fox that lives by instinct. You're not a cat that lives by instinct and must operate by the laws of the universe. Okay, the cat does not make decisions. Dogs do not make decisions in the same way that you and I do. They just act. And they act because all of math led them to act that certain way. You have the ability to choose. I don't believe that we're deterministic. If you have the option of going left and right, 
you make a choice of left and right. Now, you're, uh, you're likely or more likely to choose left or right based on prior history, based on past experience, based on things that have happened, but you still have the choice, okay? And so you could leave it up to chance. Instead of making a choice left and right, you can pull out a coin and flip the coin, leave it up to, to chance. You can ask somebody else. You do not necessarily have to be the dog and just go one way or another without any consideration of it, right? You can make decisions. Same applies to your life. You have the ability to choose how you're going to live your life today. You don't have to live it the way you have been living it. You don't have to be deterministic any longer. You can go off and live however you want your life to be. And to do that, you have to have faith that by acting a certain way, you will be able to get to the result. And that faith, what is that faith in? At the end, like, really, what does that faith come down to? Like, and the psychology, like, there's a book. I loved this book. I read it numerous times. It's called The Power of Habit. I apologize. I don't remember the author's names. Big, thick book, entirely science-based, all right? It talks about all kinds of studies about habits and how humans operate. And they, they talk about animals. They talk about babies. They talk about all kinds of stuff. You can change how you want to be at any time. But the key to it is you have to believe and have faith that you can change. That is like the fundamental crux of it. It's not just taking action. That faith element and what is the faith in? I'm going to leave you on that question. What is it we have to have faith in in order to be able to change? Because I believe it's just like the fundamental forces. We can't quite pin it down because that thing that we're pinning it on is God. All right, guys, keep looking for the light in the tempest. God will show you the way.